nuclear energy specialist Mark Nelson, who joins me from Chicago. And Mark, we saw this alarming tweet from Ukraine's foreign minister saying that if the plant blows up, it will be 10 times larger than Chernobyl. Certainly very concerning. But, but you're an expert in this. Put this into perspective. Is there a, a real danger here? Um, there is not a real danger of the plant blowing up. And to say that it could blow up and be 10 times worse than Chernobyl is, I'm afraid, completely false. All right. Well, that is certainly um, reassuring. What kind of security or control measures uh, would be in place at a plant like this um, in the event of an attack, which is, is um, happening? Normally, we describe nuclear safety from the inside of the reactor out as in the nuclear fuel is contained within strong metal fuel rods, which is contained in a very thick, extremely strong reactor. And then that is inside an extremely powerfully built, very strong, very thick containment structure. But since we're talking about the reactor under attack, let's go from the other way. The reactor dome is designed so that a fighter jet could slam straight into it, and the fighter jet would be disintegrated and you would see essentially no impact on the dome itself. So the idea that this dome can be breached to attack the reactor just doesn't have a basis in reality. Okay, again, very reassuring to hear that. What is potentially the worst case scenario here then? Would it, this attack potentially knock out power to Ukraine? Is that likely to happen? So it is possible that if Russian troops made the decision to knock out the transmission lines coming to the plant. First of all, the plant would need to shut down immediately if it is not already shut down. Um, but it looks like they haven't done that because we're at least at the time that the videos you're showing are occurring, the plant still has power on from the grid. So at, as long as the grid stays on, there is effectively no plausible way that the plant could become a danger to the public. If the power is lost off-site, then we have a different situation, not that it becomes dangerous to the public, but it becomes a situation that's more concerning and we must watch. What would occur if the power is cut to the plant? Well, first of all, if there are any reactors still on, they will turn off automatically. Even a shell or a bomb landing anywhere near the plant would trigger automatic shutdown from seismic safety. These are the, this is the equipment that protects against earthquakes at the plant. So the plant would shut down. After shutting down, the reactor core is still making a bit of heat. That heat needs to be carried away. There are automatic safety systems that turn on straight away to remove that heat. The heat is taken away by water that's coming in through pumps and entering the core and taking away the heat. If the pumps, which are running on power, are disrupted from the loss of power to the plant, then the plant has a series of safety procedures it goes through. Now, these plants are certified by European nuclear safety officials. They have gone through stress tests after Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant had three reactors melt down in 2011. These stress tests were to confirm that if very bad accidents occur at the plant, if, if in an extreme earthquake happens, or if a total loss of off-site power and complete inability to supply fuel or people or help from outside the plant, the plant is still capable of protecting the public, keeping the core covered with water, and avoiding a meltdown. What we can be assured of, too, is if there was an interruption to every level of safety procedure that cools the core after shutting down the reactors, then if there was a meltdown, the maximum possible event is contained by the reactor pressure dome itself, by the containment dome that's so strong that even fighter jets running into it would not, would not harm its ability to contain any radio, radioactive particles. So I have to say, though, it's concerning to us nuclear specialists to see a, a peaceful nuclear plant become a site of skirmishes between troops and plant security staff. It's not distressing to me because there's a worry of danger to the public. I'm watching, but I'm not worried about that. Instead, my concern 
becomes um, that I don't think I don't think that the plant staff is going to be able to operate at the absolute best potential when they're being fired upon. Yeah, that certainly makes a lot of sense. And thank you for putting that into some perspective for us. Uh, Mark Nelson joining us from Chicago. Thank you.